That's right kids, we're back with another Maya video. Last time we covered the history and content of the Maya text known as the Popovu, which houses the Maya creation myth and gives us a look at the Kichimaya and what they value in society. Of course, the Popovu itself is so jam packed, I had to dedicate an entire video to the story we're going to talk about today. That story of course being the tale of the Hero Twins. Now before we start, I want to point out that the Popovu is divided into four books, with the first one being about the Earth and human creation and the Hero Twins' first adventure, in between the previous creation of the world and the one we know today. Our story starts off with a guy named Bukub Kakwiks, also known as Seven Macaw, who has silver eyes and emerald teeth, and is probably a reference to how Maya nobles often decorated their teeth with precious stones. Obviously, this guy liked to show off, even to the point of declaring himself to be the sun. Man, talk about humble. Our protagonists of the story, the Hero Twins, Hunapu and Chapalinka, hated the dude, and I mean, I see why. One day, he was just minding his own business sitting on a tree, when all of a sudden he spots the twins in the foliage. Before he could react, the twins blew a dart at him, knocking him off the tree and breaking his jaw. Or his beak? With Hunapu proceeding to jump on the dude, obviously Seven Macaw was furious, and as anyone would with dealing with unruly children, decides to rip Hunapu's arm off. I mean, jeez, these guys are violent. Seven Macaw goes back home to his wife, where he hangs up Hunapu's arm as a trophy, I guess and cries over the pain of his broken jaw, and screams, I'll get your Hunapu and Shabalenka! Like some episode of Phineas and Ferb or something. Now, these twins were not ordinary people. They were magical demigods who didn't take lightly to the idea of losing a limb, so they knocked on the door of two of the creator gods who built the world alongside Kukukan and Hurukan. The creator gods, Shippa Yakok and Shimukane, I'm so sorry if I'm saying the wrong, this is so bad, who disguise themselves as typical sorcerers. Nope, no godly powers here, just some regular good old typical non-godly sorcerers here. I can't talk. While Macaw planned his revenge, the gods were planning theirs too, and managed to pull off theirs first. The gods knocked on Macaw's door, pretending to be doctors, and persuaded him to let them operate on him to relieve the pain. Obviously, this guy was desperate. They told him that they were going to replace his jeweled teeth, and Macaw allowed them, hoping his agonizing torture would end. The gods proceeded to replace his teeth with corn, then somehow convinced the dude to let them take out his freaking eyeballs. Did I mention that mythology was violent? I mean, then again, his eyes were made out of gemstones, but I mean, like, still, those are his eyes. The procedure can possibly be seen as the gods stripping away several Macaw's power, as his power comes from his wealth, as seen with the jewels and the precious stones and whatever. Obviously, the procedure didn't work out as Macaw planned, and he and his wife died, ending the rule of the false son. And Hunapu got his arm back and just put it back on, you know, like you do. But the twins weren't done yet. Makai had two sons who were mountain movers and makers, so of course they had to check them off their hit list. First, they went after Sipakna, who was convinced to help 400 children carry a tree to be the roof of a house they were building. Little did he know, the hero twins were actually the ones behind all of it. They had the children convince Sipakna to jump into a ditch that so happened to be his grave. Fun! They tossed the tree on top of him, nearly killing him. However, he managed to hide in a small cave in the side of the ditch and cut off his hair and nails and let the ants carry it to the surface to make it seem like he was actually dead. He waited a long time for the youths to become drunk on Puke to celebrate before climbing out and shaking the youths house causing it to collapse on top of them killing all of them. The hero twins were upset about the loss of the 400 youths and came up with an even better plan. The Pakna usually ate fish and crabs so the hero twins constructed a fake crab to lure the Pakna into a cave. Once on all fours with his head stuck in the cave, the hero twins threw an entire other mountain on him and crushed him, turning his dead body into stone. A tad overkill if you ask me. Now only his brother Kabra Khan, also known as the Earthquake, was left. They went up to him during his favorite pastime, which just so happened to be overturning hills? Wow, these guys have strange hobbies. Luckily for the hero twins, they were able to use Earthquake's pride in hill flipping and challenged him, telling him to overturn a nearby hill. But first, they shot down a bird with a blowpipe, as they tend to do, and poisoned it with dirt. They gave it to the mountain mover to eat, probably to give him strength. However, when he did heat it, all of his strength drained away from the poison, and making it impossible for him to lift the hill. The twins took advantage of his weak state and binded him, burying him alive. To this day, we still feel him thrashing around in his binds underground, trying to break free, which explains why he's called Earthquake. Wow, these hero twins are so much more violent than I thought. And that's pretty much where the first book ends. This was actually a pretty interesting story and shows why they're called the Hero Twins. 
The Popovu tends to show us the value the kids should have in worshipping the gods, as with the creation myth and the wood people. That's still true when it comes to the hero twins, as they take down the false god, his greedy son Sepakna, and the proud for Earthquake. I gotta admit that at first when reading the Popovu, I just thought it was just some typical mythology story about the good guys against the bad guys, until I looked deeper into it and really started to study what these characters represent. And this is only book 1 of 4! I'd love to keep talking about the Popo Vu for hours on end, but unfortunately I had to stop here for now. I'll make sure to cover the other books in the future, and I'm pretty excited about that, especially the part where they take a trip down to the underworld, Shibaba. Which is probably the most popular part of the Popo Vu, honestly. Until then, remember that there's always more depth to a story than there might seem at first glance. Just think about it. <laughs>